Hello viewers, I'm Simon Christie, host, owner and producer of 4 Drive TV and your guide for another exciting episode. Now this week we're kicking off by heading over to Western Australia where we catch up with good friends from Ultimate 4 Drive and head south out of Perth for a fantastic 4 Wheel Drive trip. You'll see that featured over the next two episodes. We've also got a great blend of motorsport, information and tech tips, so let's get into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. G'day everybody, I'm Jeff from Ultimate Four Wheel Drive and welcome to our weekend down south. Simon and Miranda have come over again, taking the crew from Ultimate down to Wellington Dam for the weekend. The plan is to go down to the dam today and have some lunch at the dam, then go find our camp spot. We'll set up our camp and then we might go look at Black Diamond Lake and go back to camp and just take it easy for the night. Once we get to the dam, have a look around, have lunch, and then we'll head off to the campsite. Uh, Wellington Dam is about two and a half hours south of Perth. It's in the Collie region. Some of the best forward driving. It's my favourite spot to camp. An unusual place called Gnomesville. I don't think there'd be anywhere else in Australia that looks like this place. We will have to put the cars in forward drive at some stage, I'm sure, and it's going to be a little bit slippery. But fantastic forward driving as well as fantastic touring, and this trip is mainly based around the touring side of it. <laughs> Well, we've just made it to Wellington Dam and we stopped in the car park and everybody had a look at the lookout over the dam wall. moved on to our lunch spot which is the quarry where they used to get the rock for the actual construction of the dam when it was first built and they've turned it into a fantastic picnic area. If you look closely at the wall you'll see where the rock climbers come down and they abseil down and they actually climb up the, the, uh, the, the sheer face of the rock. G'day viewers, Glenn here from Ultimate Fall Drive. Just had a great lunch, got a stunning backdrop, nice park area. Kids are walking around having some fun. Everyone's just having a good rest. Looking forward to getting back on the tracks. Here we'll head down to the bottom of the dam wall, we'll carry on to our campsite. We'll set up camp this afternoon and get a fire going right on the edge of the dam on the water, water's edge. For those of us who uh, want to go and do a little bit more driving around, we'll go look at Black Diamond Lake. And for the others, they may just sit around camp and just relax for the afternoon. Hi, my name's Sam, I'm from ARB. Hi, I'm Alan Johnson from Piranha Off-Road Products and we're up here at Mount Sea View, which is a magnificent part of the world, isn't it? We had a couple of mud pits today. Now they weren't exactly terribly sloppy, but they were damn slippery and there's a big hole off the side 
and I guess is if you mucked up and fell into the hole, the potential was there to roll the car. Now no one came close to that because all the drivers are pretty good. But this is one of the things that becomes interesting. Most of these vehicles are set up with diff locks and you've got to use them the right way, haven't you Sam? You definitely do. In this one section that we went through, it was sticking very high to the right hand side with a fairly sharp left hand turn into the actual base of the mud pit. Mm. Now both Alan and I had both our rear lockers on, we didn't engage our front ones. The issue being is if we were to engage our front ones, it would therefore affect our steering. Yeah, and, and push the car. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Not and where you want to go. Exactly. Trying to get control of the car and put the car into the exact position, the front locker wasn't the thing to have on. But gosh, it worked so easily. We just walked through it, didn't we? It, it was did. just effortless. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. fantastic being able to hit a button and getting that extra grip all yeah. in a tenth of a second. Yeah, and the confidence it gives you to do this stuff, it's great. Yeah, it, really cool. It does. I'm quite young compared to the rest of the team here this week and I'm by far the novice of the group. But coming along to an event like this, people like Alan who have done it their entire life, hey, that little button <laughs> helps your confidence immensely. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Good it work. Is. Good work, Sam. Thanks. Hi, I'm Clint Reed from Reedy's 4x4. Today we're here with Danny Suzuki. It may look like a rusty old pile of junk at the moment, but we're gonna we're gonna do a little pimp my ride on her. Currently we've got all the chrome in for the roll cage. We've cut the back off the car because we're gonna do like a little extra cab ute with a comp style tray. We've got a 1.6 Vitara engine and an auto to go in this. We've got a Reedy's 4x4 yellow paint job that's going to happen because if Reedy does the work, it gets painted on the, the yellow. We've got some big diffs to go into this that Danny supplied to us and some really nice wheels and tyres. They're going to make this beast lift up a lot higher than she is. The diffs we're putting in this are shaved. They're fully braced. Air lockers front and rear. We've got KPD beadlock rings to go on the outside. It's going to look a hell of a rig when we're finished with it. He's also got us some suspension, some rear springs that we're going to have to adapt and put in the front. We're going to undo all the wiring harness, undo the engine mounts. We're going to lift this body off and then we're going to lift the motor and gearbox out. We've got some seats to go in it, diff locks, everything. This car, we're fully going to pimp this car out and make a, a tough little zoop for Danny to drive around in. And we're going to get this thing on the road. Once we leave here this morning, we'll head down towards Wellington Dam. It's about two and a half hour drive. And once we get to the dam, we'll stop at the dam and we'll have a look around, have lunch, and then we'll head off to the campsite, collecting firewood along the way. Uh, Wellington Dam is about two and a half hours south of Perth. Uh, it's in the Collie region. Some of the best forward driving. It's my favourite spot to camp. You'll see last year, we did Goat Road last year and that's in the same area. Fantastic forward driving as well as some fantastic touring and this trip is mainly based around the touring side of it. Glenn's bringing along the ultimate Hilux giveaway SR Hilux. $100,000 worth of accessories. He's going to use it as this weekend as a bit of a shakedown for it before we 
raffle it off and give it away. Yeah, we had a few interesting recoveries this afternoon. Three vehicles stuck quite badly seen an interesting water crossing and decided to take it. It all looked quite good at the start and then on the way back much more difficult than what we thought. So cars got stuck and it was an interesting recovery, hooked up, had some fun getting them out. Backing back to recover the patrol, Jeff Pongratz got himself offline a bit and into a deep hole himself. So we actually had a situation where both cars were stuck. We had to enlist the third vehicle to get the, the original recovery vehicle out. We got that freed up and then used that car to pull both the cars out that were stuck back of the river. What we actually had to do is join two straps together in this instance. We couldn't get back far enough, risk of getting bogged again. So we joined two together and that gave us enough distance to stay clear of the bog and actually recover the cars. I'm stuck! Not anymore! We didn't actually plan to go out and do that particular crossing. We just went for a bit of a drive down the track to see what we could find. And it's usually with these unplanned events, the guys got together, we got stuck, but the guys got to get out, use the gear, and get back to the grassroots, even though there's a few dirty cars. And it's just a good opportunity to get back to basics, back to what it's actually all about. We all agreed that we want to get out there and do it a whole lot more. So the next trip's going to be planned, and that'll be a day where we'll actually go out and get stuck. It's top of mind, so if someone asks how to do it, the guys are fresh and they know what's going on. Today, most of the driving's been pretty casual, a bit of touring, pretty relaxing, nothing too extreme. As soon as we put into camp, a bit of a mission, Few of the other boys got stuck as well. It's pretty deceiving out there. We looked pretty solid, but really, really muddy underneath and soft. It was all good fun and we loved it. Hey!
G'day, my name's Paul. This is my 07 Toyota Prado. It's got a two inch lift, three inch exhaust, mud tires on it, it's got a computer chip. It's got the Heyman Reese heavy duty tow bar. Goes well, goes long distances, good on fuel. Love to put front and rear diff locks on it. And really that's about it for now. <laughs> Love going up high country, go up hunting. Hilden, Jameson, Matlock, Lacola, Wanagana Station. Great, great four wheel driving in it. Next trip I'd love to do would be either Tasmania or Cape York. For information on how to be one of the lucky Your Rig winners, keep an eye on the 4 Wheel Drive TV Facebook page for updates. And each weekly winner takes home a copy of Blitz magazine, a copy of Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazines, an electric blue span set snatch strap, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a litre of emergency gear oil thanks to 360 gearboxes, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer, an any sharp knife sharpener thanks to Keesler, a set of the stronger than standard expander pegs, a 12 volt small device solar charger thanks to Roller Solar, a mean mother recovery strap and drying bag, a copy of Bowhunter magazine, one of the new Nava pocket LED lights, a Nava palm LED light, a DP chip stubby holder, a DP chip diesel power hat, a bottle of responsive additive thanks to responsive engineering, a pair of four-wheel drive TV stickers, an ARB 4B and Ariel drink bottle, an ARB LED headlamp, a pair of handheld UHF radios in the Oricom UHF tradie pack, a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's dipping, basting and marinating sauce. And it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. We'd love to thank Tom and Miranda for bringing us out today, had an awesome day. Love the prizes, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Andrew from DP Chip Berrima Diesel. And I'm David from Kmart 4 Wheel Drive. And here we are at the beautiful highlands of Mount Seaview. Takes us to the river crossing, Andrew. Mm, mm. Very interesting. Very interesting, that little part. So we got into some deeper water around there. Saw Al get that ute nice and down low around through the reeds very there. Very deep. Yeah. I think Al had fish coming out the tail there. Just a little bit. But it's sort of like the last track of the day scenario. I think you'd done a couple of shots for the camera crew. Correct, correct me if yes. I'm wrong here. Correct. A couple of shots for the camera crew. Someone said one more time, a little bit faster. What and happens when you do one more time? What did your wife say? <laughs> more my, wife, my wife was with me in the car on that one more time trip. So it was very interesting, as you can probably see. Went down there and the wheel did, did that traditional catch me off guard, dropped in another hole on the air cleaner side. I sort of was ready for it because I knew I was going in deep. As soon as that dropped in, literally off with the key. Yep. So I was able to stop the engine. Could have been probably catastrophic. Was there at a point at that particular time that you noticed that the engine was going to stop or it was just the fact that you saw the front dip under and you turned it off for caution? Pre yeah, pretty much the front dipped under and everything went pretty quiet, which you knew already that's already the air cleaner's now gone pff, solid, which is a bit of a cork, so it slows the airflow down. There's no way the air will go through in a split second. Yep. And it was just off with the key. Off with it straight away. Engine came to a stop. My mate here, of course, towed me out. Thanks, David. Simon came out as a gentleman, hooked yep. up the strap, and out we went. Did the usual checks, and of course, first thing was flooded air cleaner. Pulled that off, but with modern diesels now, they really have a pretty long inlet tract. And if you were lucky in conditions like we were, and ready to do anything that we could to stop, which I was, air cleaner, piping off, click, click, click on the starter motor. Yep. Luckily, nothing had really gotten through to the engine. Once that was clear, gave it some sort of slower revs and, and cleared out. I think what it comes down to, you really just have to be very, very careful in river crossings. And it just shows, you know, as simple as that was, absolutely need a snorkel. It was above where it should have been going without a snorkel. We survived it, but certainly luck and experience kicked in. Now, a lot of our viewers are going to look at us and go, well, why were you in that predicament in the first place? Why didn't we have a snorkel on the car? All those sorts of things. 
I suppose the biggest reason is you're testing that vehicle at the That's moment correct. to its absolute limits because you're doing a lot of diagnostics on it at the moment. We are doing a big trip later on this year, which you're doing a massive build up on that vehicle. And of course, what will you be fitting from now on? Um, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's yep. what this show's about. We've covered it before when we've all had our products on here. It's not the sort of show where the products are on showcase. It's us and the manufacturers are there. Yep. We're there doing the hard yards. Yep. Even on the way up, we've been filling every 100 kilometers to do economy checks, all sorts of things. So putting it through these tests, I didn't come out to do any damage. But yes, we've marked the rear bar, but I'm putting a no rear KMR bar. We've marked the front and put a little bit of a dent in there. We're getting rid of that and putting on the ARV bull bar. So we're, we're not coming up to flatten things, but it has been some pretty extreme testing. I've done that knowing that we're actually going to be doing these accessories. So water one was probably pushing the testing to a bit of an edge Not quite there. where you wanted to go. <laughs> That's right. But it all looked good, and I'm sure there's some really good footage here that we can yep. take and everybody can learn by, you know, mm. to be very, very careful around water. Yeah, and I think, I suppose, a couple of things is if you are going to be wading into water that deep, there's ways of tarping up the vehicle and protecting right. the front of the vehicle. What we did today was probably not what we expected to happen, but we were able to be prepared for it. And Andrew, I suppose you were able to turn that off fairly quickly. We were able to get you out of there, clean it all out. And we got 10, 15 out. minutes, we are on the road again. And the good old Miss is flying along again as always. That's it. Hey, I'm Shane from Masson Rangers 4x4. We're down at Reedy's 4x4 Mania. Awesome weekend. So we're here with two 80 series cruisers, 4.5 turbo petrol, front and rear lockers, modified winch, front and rear ARB lockers, Simex tyres on some custom beadlock rims, and yeah, that's about it. So both these vehicles are daily drivers as well, so we've been a bit hesitant here and there. We've had a quarter panel damage on Bradley's 80, but all part of the fun. Hopefully next time we can set up a specific custom vehicle for the job. Well viewers, thank you for tuning in to another big episode of 4 Drive TV. Now if the hardcore motorsport type episode of 4 Drive TV isn't quite your thing, don't forget you can tune into your 4x4, my touring and destination show. Or if you'd like to get more tips and information on how to get the most out of your 4 Drive, check out Simon Christie's 4 Drive Pro Tips. That's three great shows coming to you from a true 4 Drive enthusiast. Well viewers, thanks for watching Simon Christie and the team. Tune in next week for more excitement. And always remember, tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard.